at developmental psychology, seven to nine percent. It's a big chunk of the test. The chapter's long, but let's hit the highlights. Here we go. All right. First thing, big thing to be aware of is maturation. Development is as we go through life. Maturation is physical, no learning, things like puberty. Uh, some brain stuff here. Uh, then be aware humans do have reflexes, but not, like routine, but not very many. We learn a lot, unlike birds that make nests. Bi maturation is biological. Remember that. Socialization is learning, and that's what our focus is going to be on. Habituation is when we get used to something. Like here, uh, you know, the, the buffalo would be unusual. And it's important in this chapter because babies habituate. They get used to something. They stop looking at things. So habituation is basically silent speech for a baby. Okay, Piaget, big, big guy. You got to know him for sure. First thing, a schema is a framework of an idea. If I say English teacher, you think of an English teacher, that's your schema. Piaget's big idea is... Basically, we don't know anything when we're born, and we build our knowledge through schemas. What does that mean? A kid will know this is a dog at some point. Then he'll look at this, and he'll say, dog. But what's going to happen is um, sometimes something new will come in, and he'll have to change it, for example, like when he sees a moose. But let's back up for a second. Okay. You build your schemas. Once you know what a dog is, anything new you compare to what you already know. This is similar to this. It's the same thing. So assimilation is when the new thing fits, like these are both dogs, assimilation. But what's a moose? The kid will say, oh, that's a dog. No, it's not a dog. It's something new called a moose. He needs a new concept. That's called accommodation. When you build a new concept, that's called accommodation. Now he knows what a dog is and what a moose, it, moose is, and that's, uh, that's basic Piaget stuff. Okay, now the stages, uh, be aware that we change through time, and he was concerned about how babies think. Okay, the first stage is infants, and he called it sensory motor. He was a little harsh. They know more than he said, but he said basically infants sense things, and they move, and he called it sensory motor. However, Something's going to happen during this stage you want to be aware of called object permanence. At about eight months, the kid will realize an object exists even when he doesn't see it. That's called object permanence. And that's why at the same time, eight months, if mom leaves the room, he'll be nervous about the stranger. That's called stranger anxiety because at this point, when mom leaves, she can think about mom and have stranger anxiety. Okay, that's a big thing for stage one. Stage two, think of preschool, cute preschool kids. They have some thinking issues that Piaget talked about. They basically lack logic. So think of like a kid like this. They have things like they lack conservation. What does that mean? Basically, if you pour this cup into here, they will think C has more because it's taller. They're not able to maintain the conservation of the cup. That's a pre-operational task. They are egocentric. They think the world revolves around them. And um, they have something called irreversibility, where sometimes they can't see someone else's point of view. And uh, that's the main thing for this one here, pre-operational. Stage three is called concrete operational. Think of elementary school, like third grade. During this stage, very important, basic logic emerges. So everything I just talked about will reverse. They can do conservation and all those other tasks will be reversed. The final stage, formal operational. Think in high school you go to the formal. This is full-blown abstract logic algebra, everything done by that stage, okay? Uh, all right, then, all right, school. I'm just going to go past that for a second. Those are the stages. Okay, Piaget is very important. Assimilation, accommodation, schema, and the four stages. Social development. We're social creatures. Um, so for this one, we have things like attaching and imprinting and this kind of thing. All right, what is this? Birds imprint like this. We're not birds. We attach. And so Ainsworth did a lot of research on attachment theory. A secure infant will, ex will explore and come back to mom. Harry Harlow is really big here, and he's the guy that did the experiment about a mother's love versus food. And what he did was he based, most people thought 
all a monkey wanted was food. But he discovered that the monkeys really needed a mom. They needed mothering. So Harlow is the guy that did empirical research that showed the importance of attachment. Harry Harlow, and here is the monkey that spent all day on the cloth monkey and only went for food when he needed it. Uh, be aware you are born with a temperament. That's your natural, innate, emotional style as a baby. Some of you were difficult. Some of you were easy. Ask your mom. She'll remember. All right. Adolescence. A lot of stuff in here. It's like a 60-page chapter, 80-page chapter. Eric Erickson. Who is this? Eric Erickson talked about psychosocial challenges. Social is people, people in your life. All right. There's a lot of different stages in here, but the basic thing he talked about was at different stages in time, we have different needs and different people that we need to be, that we need. Infants need to trust their parents, and if they don't, they will mistrust. Um, so basically, Erickson uh, has a number of different stages. I'm just going to pass here, but stage, okay, so stage one was infants trust versus mistrust. Stage two, a two-year-old needs their independence. He called this autonomy. And if they don't get it, they're going to feel bad. They're going to feel doubt, or they're going to feel shame. So that infant's need is very different from a two-year-old. All right, then he jumps all the way to like elementary school, and he uses some odd words. He calls it industry versus inferiority. Here's what this means. This kid in the third grade needs to feel good about himself, that he's a good student, a good runner, a good helper, whatever it might be. And if he does not feel industrious or competent, he will feel inferior and bad about himself. Then it jumps to high school, you guys, and Erickson suggests that teenagers need identity. And they get it from their friends. And if they don't get their identity, they're going to be confused. He called that role confusion. Also, think about it. Teenagers really value their peers, whereas a third grader is much more focused on their parents. Uh, then it's going to jump all the way to um, your 20s. And for this one, he called it intimacy versus isolation. And this is quite simply, Erickson said, in the 20s, people want relationships. They want to share themselves in a relationship. But there's always a battle here. You can get the relationship or you will feel isolated. Then old people, middle-aged people, uh, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, he called this, again, he has some strange word, generativity versus stagnation. What does this mean? Generativity is like generous. They, older people want to give back to their culture and their society. If they don't want to give back, they're going to be what he called stagnant or stagnation. Finally, Forrest Gump's mom in the end, uh, about to uh, pass on, he called it integrity versus despair, meaning older people look back on their life, look back on their relationships, and if they feel good about their relationships, they have integrity, otherwise they will feel despair. All right, that's Erickson real fast there. Be aware of the different stages at the different ages. Finally, parenting, Baumrin is the parenting guru. Just remember, authoritarian is very strict, and they don't say why. Authoritative is strict, and they explain why? Permissive is chill. If they ask, the research indicates authoritative kids are the happiest because they feel some control of what's going on in their lives. They have limits, but they understand why if they ask. All right, uh, there's Erickson. We did him again. Moral development, sense of right or wrong, a guy named Kohlberg. Kohlberg says that basically people have a sense of right or wrong, and the stages are as follows. Conventional. Conventional is normal. Pre-conventional is a small kid here will follow the rules, but he was interested in why do they follow the rules. They follow the rules to avoid punishment. They don't understand why they are following the rules. That's called pre-conventional. Think of preschool. Okay. Conventional is us and everybody else. Once you understand the need for rules, Colbert called this conventional morality, and a society can be just fine. Everybody follows the rules, and they understand the need. You know, in the third grade, the teacher will say, we need rules. You understand them. That's conventional. A few people have guts and courage and are better than the rest of us, and they're not us. Usually, it's people like uh, Gandhi and Martin Luther King. They call that post-conventional. 
They go for universal ethical principles of right or wrong. If your society is very, very wrong, they will not follow it. That's post-conventional morality. Carol Gilligan criticized it. Look her up on, uh, she's usually on the test. Okay, research techniques throughout the lifespan. How do we do this? Two ways. One way takes a long time, longitudinal research. If you studied this guy when he's 25, 35, 45, through all these years, that's a longitudinal study, takes a long time, very expensive, and he probably won't call you back. More common would be a cross-sectional study, which right now you would get a group of two-year-olds and five-year-olds and 10-year-olds right now, different age group at the same time you would study them, okay? And I think, is that it? Couple things on gender real quick. Gender is learned. General identity is your sense of male, female. If you see the word gender typing, think of stereotypes like girls wear pink. Androgyny, you have male and female characteristics. And oh, okay, a couple of things here too. Cognition and age. As people get older, their crystallized knowledge, facts, stays the same. Your grandpa can remember the Yankee shortstop batting average from 40 years ago. But their fluid problem-solving skills gets worse with age. Okay, Emo Alzheimer's is dementia, and younger people have higher highs and lower lows, and basically old and young people are about the same happiness. And I think that is it. Okay, real fast, that is development.